you know, we just launched the Better Baby Book. I, I would invite people to go to betterbabybook.com. My wife's a physician from the Karolinska Institute, and we wrote this book with 1,300 references about what you can do before and during pregnancy up through birth to change the intelligence and even the genes of your kids. And it turns out there's four things that matter both during pregnancy and in the first seven years of life. And I call them sort of like the four horsemen of epigenetics. Epigenetics is the study of how the environment changes gene expression, and it's multi-generational. So if you do stuff right, even for your kids when they're young, or even better yet, in the womb, your grandkids will be healthier as a result. So the four horsemen of epigenetics are stress, and I don't mean just like emotional stress, and physical stress is stress as well. There's not enough food, <laughs> you know, you're, you're locked in a dark cave or something. Uh, there's all sorts of stressors. Uh, being sick is a stressor, things like that. There's nutrition, which means getting the right micronutrients. There's also getting the right macronutrients, which means the right amounts and types of protein and fat and things like that. And the final thing there is avoiding toxins. And everyone talks about toxins in the environment, but what we don't understand is that a lot of our natural foods are full of toxins there to keep animals from eating the food. So if you eat too much of the wrong foods or the ones that you're most sensitive to, you really can mess up a pregnancy or even a kid. As an example, I have a three and a five year old. If you have kids, they should be on a gluten-free diet, period. Gluten in 70% of people has an opiate-like effect in the brain. The gluten breaks down partially in the gut, it turns into gluteomorphin, yes, that sounds like morphine, and it activates opiate receptors. There's undeniable evidence about this. The idea that you need to get fiber for your kids from whole grains is complete BS. You can get fiber from broccoli just fine. And what people can do for their young children, the first seven years of life are the most important years of life post-birth. What you do in the womb actually has more influence throughout the kid's life than after they're born. But those first seven years, you're setting up not their conscious thinking brain that does math. That really comes on after age seven. Those first seven years, what you're doing is you're teaching first the brainstem about the environment they're in, and then you're teaching the mammalian brain, the part of you that's like a Labrador. This is why kids hit each other. They're learning to survive neurologically in the world we're in. So if you take your kids and you let them watch, you know, three-year-olds watching people killed on TV and stuff like that, you are sending a signal to the Labrador in their head that says the world is a dangerous place. You should prepare to be what we, in our book, what we call um, basically protection mode or defensive mode. And there's two modes that you can be in epigenetically. This is a simplification, but there's defensive mode, which says I'm in a hostile environment. The survival of the species is probably at risk, and I should optimize my genetic expression, my thinking, my nervous system to be ready to fight or run away. And that's what I want to do. So you get sympathetic nervous system dominance, which contributes to things like ADD and behavioral problems in kids. And then on top of that, you could have switched the kids over to what we call expansion mode, where I'm in a world where there are not too many threats, where I'm safe, where I have adequate food and particularly adequate healthy fat to grow a big brain. Well, since there is no threat I'm protecting against, I think I will allocate resources best inside my body and my brain and my hormones to thrive. What we want to do is get our kids under seven to thrive, feel as little fear as they can, and to feel safe as much as possible. If you do that, screw the math, they'll learn fine after seven. I didn't get my first computer until I was eight. There aren't a lot of 40 year olds who can say that. My computer was pre-DOS. But I helped to create modern cloud computing when I was at Exodus Communications, like the first data center company. Okay, I started at eight. There's no reason that your kid needs an iPad when they're two. They just don't. And the less screen time your kids have, the better off they're going to be, in my opinion, my physician wife, Dr. Lana, her opinion, and all the research we did. It, it's kind of funny. If you eat foods when you're pregnant that you want your kids to eat, they have a natural taste for them. And there's studies that show that. My wife is Swedish. Swedes eat the weirdest stuff, like anchovies and sardines and salmon eggs. And um, like it's like spoiled fish is a delicacy there. Um, I forget the name for it. But so my wife ate a ton of that sort of stuff. My kids breakfast, smoked salmon, sockeye salmon is the cleanest salmon, um, avocados. Um, they will eat butter. In fact, my, my daughter Anna, you'll love this. Butter is great for kids if it's from grass-fed cows. It's really important that they get that much saturated fat and the trace nutrients in butter. And kids know it. That's why they'll eat butter. So ghee? Ghee is fine as long as it's from grass-fed cows. You, you, ghee is actually better than butter. But for most people, particularly non-Asians, they can handle butter very well. If you're Asian, you probably can handle butter, but ghee is almost guaranteed to not cause problems. And then my daughter sat on Santa's lap for the first time in her life when she was three. And Santa said, what do you want? 
for uh, what do you want for for Christmas, little girl? And she says, I want my own stick of salted butter. And Santa looks at me like, huh? And I said, yeah, yes, yes. So uh, he did say yes. And Christmas morning, she had her bike and she had her little cooking set and she opened her Kerrygold butter, which is the Irish butter that's very available in the US. And she looks at it and she goes, yay! And she holds it above her head. She runs around the house like an Olympic torch, opens it up and takes a bite like a Snickers bar. Now, many listeners are going to be horrified by that. You know what I felt? I felt like, hallelujah. She did not want a damn Twinkie, right? She did not want Lucky Charms. She wanted something that directly affects her brain's ability to form what it's made out of. Your brain is made out of first water and then fat, nothing else. The lining of your nerves, the ones that you're so desperately working to grow when you're young, is made out of fat. You need that stuff. And kids on a high-fat diet don't get cavities. They thrive and they behave better. My kids, snacks, they go to school. Like, they're allowed to have snacks because it's socially acceptable. They don't need snacks. Snacks come from juice boxes and from feeding kids carbs. My kids eat protein and fat and some vegetables in the morning, and they do the same thing at lunch, maybe with a few carbs, and they eat dinner with lots of carbs, which helps them sleep through the night. They sleep 10 to 12 hours every single night, and they wake up to go to the bathroom. Our life is calmer, and our kids are calmer because they have adequate fat and healthy protein in their diet with a ton of vegetables built in.